Okay, as you can see, this is comic and manga editing in GIMP part 2. If you have not seen the first part, I implore you to click the link in the comment below and watch the first part first so you can catch up and figure out what's going on. But other than that, enjoy. Hope you like it. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm going to show you the screen tone. Now, I'm going to go back to my finder down here in my dock, bring that up, and I have another folder in my comic folder here. Keep it organized. It's called Screen Tones and Reference Picks. This is where I keep the screen tone files that I use to tone the comic. These are the ones I love the most. Grit gradients. There's nothing too fancy about them. They're just simple gradients that are screen tone colors. So let's go with I'm trying to decide. Let's do this one. We're gonna go. This is a J. This is a GIF file actually, which will open with Preview also by default. So we need to go to Open with GIMP. Okay. And you right click it to do that. It's going to bring up this little window here, just hit Assign. Alright. Now, this is really simple. You hit Select, All, Edit, Copy. You got that? And just minimize it for now because we may need to bring it back up again later. And then we're going to hit Edit, Paste on our comic window. Look there. See, this is on a floating layer. We don't want it on a floating layer because if you edit it a certain way as a floating layer, it'll just paste onto your background or the next layer below it, and that's not what we want. We want it to be a separate layer. So we got that now. Now we're going to change it to multiply. This is where the cool stuff comes in. All right. And see, you can still see your lines, but you have that tone over it. Now, got that done. And we have it over the area that we want to do, his hair here. This is one of the simpler things you can edit. Now what we're going to do to make our life a little bit simpler, we've got our toolbox here. And we've got it on the move tool for right now for moving the tone. This is the move tool. Now we're going to go to rectangular selection. And we're just going to do that, use that to make a really quick selection. Nothing too fancy. We want to get it in as close to what we're actually putting the tone on as possible so we don't have as much to erase later. You see that? You can actually, in GIMP, you can't actually edit the bounds of a rectangular selection like this in Photoshop. It's one of the areas I think GIMP is actually a little bit better. But anyways, after you've done that, you go up to Select, Invert, and that's going to select everything that's outside of this selection that we made now. You can go to Edit, Clear, and it clears the tone as long as you're on that layer. Now we've got to select none because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to come over here to our toolbox and get the eraser key. A little pink square. <laughs> and we're going to erase out anything we don't need. This part takes a little bit. I'm going to try to do it quickly so we can move on to the next step because this part is kind of self explanatory. And then I'll show you what we do next, and then I'll show you what a page looks like after we've gotten multiple screen tones on it. It helps complete it quite a bit. Makes it look pretty. <laughs> okay. See, this part, if you have a tablet, is so much easier. And your tablets, while I'm doing this, I can explain tablets to you a little bit more for people who don't have never messed with one before. They can range in price from probably a hundred and something dollars or around a hundred dollars, not very bad at all, to very expensive. We're talking thousand something. The one I have is about three forty, I believe. It's the um Intuos Yeah, it's the Wacom Intuos um four, I think it is now. But it's the medium size rather than small. Your size is not going to matter too much. I have a friend that uses a small, and she seems to like it a lot. Let's see how good our navigator is coming in handy. All right, we're done here with that. Now, you get done, and you decide you want to change how dark that screen tone is. Say you want it lighter or darker, you know, want to mess with it. We're going to go back up here to Colors, and then Brightness Contrast. And it's simple as can be. You can make that screen tone lighter by bringing up the brightness. You can make it darker by bringing down the brightness. You can go back to where you were, practically. You can also adjust how visible the dots are by going to contrast. This will make your dots stand out more up in the contrast. 
taking it down we'll make it one big even looking color so to say we want to make it brighter or we want to make the dots less visible okay and there you go it's not very hard at all all right I'm done with that. I'm just going to delete this layer because I've already done that part anyways. Now I'm going to go on and turn on all the screen tones I did earlier today to show you guys what a screen tone page looks like. Let's see, you got your layers. This is how you make a layer visible and invisible. You turn off the little eyeball. That's something that Photoshop you also do in there if you've ever used it before. Turn back on all of these. Okay, as soon as all the eyeballs are up there, you're done. Let's see. This one's probably, I don't believe I'm quite done with this one yet. I'll probably do a bit more work, but you see how much better looking the page is after you've added a little bit more detail in it. Okay, now I'm going to do something else. I'm going to show you guys how to put your text on your page, and then we'll be done. In GIMP, your text tool is over here. There we go. And now the text style I always use, the one that is standard for comics a lot of the time is comic sans ms just begin typing in comic and it'll come up and i use the bold version of it looks good and i do all caps usually because if you've ever noticed they a lot of times do all caps in comics so now what i'm going to do to enter in my text i don't remember what goes in this bubble right that's why i have my notes i go back down here turn off my edit layer and then i can just barely read this pencil here after I've done that, I can turn that back off, go up to the top, make sure black is our color that we're using here, and I'll go in and I can enter in our text. Oops, got put on caps. Okay. And there we go. Now, you notice something about this. You can actually move it right here. Just click inside the box and move it while you're on the text tool. But if you notice here, this is all oriented to the left side, which is not how they do it in comics. So you're going to come over here, and justify is where you will change that. Right here, if you mouse over it, that's right, that's left. This is centered. You want centered. And as soon as you do that, it's centered up in the bubble. Now, you want it a little bit bigger, probably. Make it easier to read. Come over here to size and just make it a bit bigger. Okay. And there you go. And now, as soon as you click on another layer now, the box around. Well, oh, now click off that tool then. Okay. Click off the text tool and the box around that disappears. And see. And then if you want to go back to it, just go back on that layer, and change the text or whatever, go back to your text tool and click inside the box. And you can edit it again. And this is your oops. This box right here is where you edit your text. You can click inside of it and change what's actually written in there. So that is this has been how you edit a comic page and finish it in GIMP. If you really work hard at making it look nice after you've actually drawn out the original ink by hand you can make something look really professional so i hope this has been helpful and thank you to my friend on deviantart for asking this question i hope you guys enjoyed these two tutorial videos if you're interested in seeing any of my work you can watch videos on my youtube channel that have some of my work in it or the better choice would be to go to the website that has the majority of my artwork. It's my DeviantArt account, Aoyuru, and you can find the link on my YouTube channel page. Adios! Mm.